Okay, welcome everyone. I am going to start our, uh, begin our webinar. This is webinar number seven, PowerPoint Enhancing Presentations. Welcome, um, Bob is not in today to start the beginning part, so I'm gonna read off the slides for you. Um, points to consider today, um, make sure that um, your um, audio is on your computer only. Um, the web client will not, um, won't do sound if you're running Windows XP. Use the text window to ask questions, but questions will be addressed at the end of the session since the session moves quickly. Problems connecting or hearing, either email support at simplexit.com or call 234-380-1277. This webinar will also be put up on YouTube soon after. Um, if it goes over today and you can stay a little longer, it will probably uh, feel free. If not, you can watch it and then also watch it at your own speed so that you can stop whenever you um, want to get to something that is, is interesting or you need to review. Also, we have some webinar topics for the upcoming year. Actually, we've, we've picked the topics for the rest of the year. So we're going to be doing Excel charts in July, Word introduction, Word basics in August, Visio tips, how to create flow charts and org charts, working with those more effectively, Outlook, organizing your life with emails, creating folders, uh, Excel basics, start to finish, PowerPoint basics. We did, we did a PowerPoint, PowerPoint basic a while back. We're going to do it again. And using the data ribbon in Excel, such as sorting, filtering, subtotals, data validation, all of the fun stuff in Excel. Um, also, um, the lunch and our topics for 2014, Office 365, Virtualization for the SMB, 7th Annual Simplex IT Picnic, August 13th, and, and Servers in the Cloud on September. So you can see the list. I'm sure these, this information will be coming out also. July 10th, the next one will be Excel Charts. Other events will be listed in the newsletter or by email. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the PowerPoint Enhancing Your Presentations webinar. This session, the last PowerPoint presentation session that we did, was more the basics, how to create a presentation, create your slides, work with your slides. Today's session is going to show you how to enhance your slides with graphics and putting using different using a design template, putting graphics in the background, adding charts, working with um, smart art, turning uh, text into, working with word art, inserting pictures, video, audio. So to get started, I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna go to new to access the templates in 2013. If you're using 2010, when you go to templates, there'll be a PowerPoint folder that you can click on. You will also have a lot a lot of templates in 2010 and one of them is also a design background folder it has a lot of neat unique styles since the limitation in 2013 there's not as many templates but you can still i mean there's a lot of templates but some of the templates that were in 10 um, you may not find them but you can go online you can go to microsoft.com and you can download free templates from their site uh they're sure there's other programs or sites out there that you can download some templates with too. So they categorize the different templates by business templates, calendars, charts and diagrams, educational templates. You can see that they come out and when you click on these templates, not only will you get a few slides, you'll get some ideas of what to put in that presentation. And sometimes you'll get one slide, a title slide, and other times you'll get more than that. And the calendar one is interesting because you can actually do event calendars and load up pictures and you'll get a calendar for each month. And then you can put inside, you can type in each of those cells, what's going on that month and put it on, um, you know, put it on your refrigerator or whatever it is that you need to do. You can insert your own graphics in there. So those are nice. You have some nice calendar templates. 
I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to the business template folder. And the one I'm going to choose today is the business currency design template. So I'm going to select that template and then I'm going to hit create. So with this template, it's going to bring up a bunch of slides and you'll notice that I'll get a title slide, I'll get a bulleted list slide, I get one with a chart, a table and a smart art diagram. And then there's some other templates in here, other design layouts that this particular template comes with. If I don't want these slides here, I can just select them over here in the slide view pane and hit my delete key or right click and hit delete slides because I'm actually going to add those slides myself later. Then I can go in here and I can start typing in my over here in my slide in my title slide. So I'm going to go ahead and just type the, the title of this PowerPoint enhancing presentations. Now a little tip to move to the next placeholder is to do control enter and then I can go ahead and type my text. Now if I click on the next slide, um, if I click on the next slide and then I go here, I have my title and content. But if I was on my title slide here and I was at my last placeholder and then I did control enter, the next slide would be a bulleted list slide. And I don't even have to click with my mouse. If I just start typing, it's automatically going to go ahead and type in the first placeholder. If I do control enter again, it's going to go to the next placeholder and I can start typing. So control enter just keeps taking me down to the next. Now I'm going to tab because I want a secondary bullet. So I'm going to say changing color schemes. I just want to get something in here real quick. Changing font schemes. Now when I'm done and I hit enter, I'm going to get a third bullet, but I don't want that bullet. I want the same bullet as I had before. So what I can do is I can do shift tab to take me back to the left or on the home ribbon, you do have your indent and decrease indent and indent buttons over there that you can use. But I like the tab, shift tab, because in that way you don't have to use the mouse. So I'm going to say adding backgrounds. Indent, I'm going to hit tab key again, colors, textures, and pictures. Now that I'm in the last placeholder, if I do control enter again, I get another bullet. Uh, control enter is going to give me another bullet to list slide. So I'm typing. I'm not even using my mouse at this point. So I'm just typing away. And when I want to indent, I do tab. This is going to be my last slide that I type out. To go back. And I'm done. All right, so I have some slides that have some text in them that I'm going to use for later. Now I'm going to go to the design ribbon and over here I'm going to go to the variants. Now this particular template doesn't have any different color choices that I can use. So if I click on the little more button here where it says variants and I go to colors, then I can access the color schemes that are listed in here for my slides. So you have shades of pink and green. And if I want a different style of green, I can automatically choose that style for my slide. But I can also go, when I go to colors, I can go to customize colors and I can actually create my own color schemes. So based on the choices that I make, I can choose my background color. And if I don't see a color choice in here, and these, these colors that you get are based off the color schemes that you pick in the design view. So whatever color scheme you pick, you're going to get greens and blues in this one. If you picked blue, you get shades of blue or purples. It just depends on what you pick. So if you go to more colors, go to the standard tab, you can then pick whatever colors you want to add to that particular scheme. And then when you're done, I'm not making great choices here, but I'm just picking something that just, just to kind of show you how this works. You've got hyperlinks, so you can change the hyperlink colors on there. Your text color background, if you want light text or dark text, so you can choose that. Then you go down here and you just call it whatever you want to. So I'll just use my first name, I'll hit save, 
and that's the colors that I've chosen. So I'm going to go back, and if I wanted to, I'm going to go back to something a little bit more subtle, not as, not as harsh. And that is the color choice I make for my slides, and it applies it to all the slides. The same thing with font styles. If you go to fonts, you can actually choose different font styles. And as you go through, you can see those different styles. And then if you'd like one, you just you click on it and it applies that to all of the slides in your presentation. If some of the templates, it might work a little differently because, you know, based on the template that you choose. In that case, if it doesn't change, then we could go to the slide master, which we're going to do in a minute. But you can also create your own customized fonts. So if there's a particular font that you want to use, um, for your presentation and then you want to use a, a different one. This would be for the heading. This might be for the body. So again, you could call this your own customized font and save this and then you can use this style also later. So you have your customized colors at the top. You have your customized fonts at the top. Over here you have a format background button. You click on it and you can actually change the background. You can do gradient fills, so you can do different shades of green. You can choose different ways of selecting. That's a little, that's a little too light. You can go in and do uh, pattern fills, so you can do different pattern styles if you want. You can also go in and put pictures in the background. So for this particular slide, you can either do pictures that you have already on file, or you can go online. If you go online, um, you can use the office clip art, online clip art, or I'm going to go to Bing and I'm just going to go ahead and type um, dollars in the search box. This way I don't even have to go to the internet to do this. This is actually taking me to the internet. Bing is Microsoft's search engine. So I'm going to select the dollars here that I see in the background and I'm going to hit insert. And that's going to insert those dollars in the background. Then I can take the transparency button and I can drag that over to customize that and use the up or down arrow depending on how light I want to make it. And then I can even use the little towel picture as texture button so it kind of makes it a little smaller. And then down here if I want to apply this to all the slides I hit apply to all and that background ends up as my background. And so I'm going to close that. And then I might say, you know what, I'm not sure about the design that I picked before. It seems like the colors were a little bit too, um, too light for that. So I might go in here and try to find something a little bit darker. Or if I can't, then I can go here and I can customize it or I can change that in the slide master, which is where we're going to go next. So for that particular one, I'm actually just going to pick something real quick and see what that does. And I'm not sure I like that one either. So I'm going to go back to this one, the green. All right. So let's go to the slide master now and kind of, wait a minute, I saw something real quick. doesn't seem to be applying as fast as I want. Oh, well. okay. So we'll go, we'll stick with the green one and then we'll just move on. All right. So I'm going to go to my, um, my view ribbon. And on the view ribbon, there is the master view section. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the slide master. Now the slide master, you use this when you want to change the text on your slides for all your slides. So you want to change the color, you want to change the bullets, you want to change the font. Even though those fonts and colors were for the design template, I may want to go in and change the fonts and the colors myself in the master. So go to the slide master. And what is very confusing with the new slide master to some people was the fact that you have a slide master for every layout. So because I was on the bulleted list slide, I ended up on the bulleted list layout master. But you notice there's a master for um, two column text. There's a master for title only. So 
If I scroll up to the top, there's a large master. And if I want all my slides to have the same title, the same font colors, the same bullets, then I need to click on the very first master at the very top. So what gets confusing is, depending on what slide you're on, if you're on a bulleted list slide and you go directly to the slide master, it's going to take you to the bulleted list slide master. So if I make changes here, it's only gonna apply it to any slide that's a bulleted title and content map layout, not um, a two column layout so or a title only layout so if I want it for all my slides I click on the top one the only one that sometimes does not get affected by this is the title slide so we'll worry about that later so I'm going to select my text up here I'm going to go to my home ribbon and I'm going to make my um, font a darker color I'm going to center it I can bold it, which it already is. I can make it shadow. If I wanted to change the font, I could. I can increase and decrease the font size. I can go here, and I'm just going to overall change the color for all of them, all the levels down below. And then after I do that, if I go to the Slide Master ribbon, now, most of the time when you get a new ribbon, it appears to the right of the view ribbon, but you'll notice it's to the left of the home ribbon. So on the slide master ribbon, I can change the themes, the overall colors. I can do that here. I can also change backgrounds here if I wanted to. There's a close master view button that I'm going to close out of the master view. Now what you're going to notice is that all of my slides are going to look the same. So except for the title slides, the title slides are gonna be different. So I can manually change this color or if I'm gonna have multiple title slides in my presentation, I would go to view, slide master, and then I would go to the title layout and I would change it here. So if I change it here and also when you select your text, three clicks will select it, the little preview ribbon mini toolbar will appear. You can choose your colors from here if you want. And the same thing here. Select the entire placeholder or click three times. And you can format in here. And you can right click and then bring it up to make it bold. You can make it centered. You can increase the font size. So if I close out of the title now, I have my title slide. So if I wanted to insert another slide or maybe change this slide to a title layout, go to layout and do title slide, then that would have the same font as the one above. So this one would be, you know, thanks for participating. See you next month. Okay. So, I have my slides in here. The other thing you might want to do with the Slide Master when you go to View, Slide Master, is change the bullets. So I'm going to select the first line of text. I'm going to go to the Home ribbon. I'm going to go to the drop-down arrow where the bullets are. I'm going to go to Bullets and Numbering. You can also do this by right-clicking. I can do Picture Bullets or I can do custom Symbol Bullets. I'm going to go to Pictures. Again, you can get pictures from your file, office clip art, or online. So I'm going to type coin. I see a coin right here that I'm going to click on. I'm going to insert it, and it puts the coin as my bullet. Now, it went directly back to my slide here. So if I want to format that bullet make it larger, I can go to the drop down here, go to bullets and numbering, and then I can increase the size of that bullet. So if I want to make it 120, I can't change the color of a picture, but I can increase the size of it. So I hit OK, and now I've made that larger. The other thing you might notice is the text is a little too close to that coin. So if your ruler is not showing, you need to go to View, check your ruler box. When you do that, then you can click next to the text and you'll see the little indent here that you can drag over to separate the text from the bullet so it's not so close. 
If you have a second level, you may want to select the second level. You may want to right click. You can go to directly bullets from here and bullets and numbering. Customize would take you to the symbol box. In the symbol box, if you scroll down to webdings, wingdings, one, two, and three, those are the ones that have the symbols. So as I scroll down, you can see the different symbols. I'm going to grab the money bag and hit OK. Then with the symbols, I can actually change the color. And I can change the size also of that bullet. There you go. So now I'm ready. Maybe I want to change the color of that text. And if I go to Slide Master, Close Master View, now all of my slides are going to use that bullet and that secondary bullet based off of my presentation. So it's updated all my slides and any new slides that I create. There is also a master for the handout. So when you do handouts, you can also, um, if you choose to, you want a footer down there, you could go down and type your footer, puts the date in the corner. There are different handout you could do two slides per page three slides is the one that gives you the lines so it does not show the lines in the handout master view and if i close out of that if i went to file and i went to print and i wanted to print handouts then you would see that i could do the three would give me the lines to the right you could do two, you can, in any way you formatted it, that's the way it would print it. And then the final master that you have is the notes master. The notes is for the, for the speaker. So down here in the notes box, if you wanted to make your text bigger, you wanted to make it a different font, say Arial Black, maybe you wanted to make it a little bigger, then when you go to the Notes Master tab and hit Close, then if you go to View Notes Pages, you could type your notes down here. So these notes are for the speaker notes. And this is where you type You can type in this view or in the normal view down here there's a Notes button. If you click on it, you can actually expand this up. What's nice about this is you can expand it up. You can type your notes in here. So I can expand the notes window. And when I'm done, I can just click on it again to hide it. So I don't have to sit there and keep sizing this up and down to, to create notes. So the next time I get to a slide and I want notes, I click here. I type my notes in that window. I'm done I click on the notes button to close it so when I go to file and I go to print and I want to print my notes pages then you'll see those notes down below they're large I can read them and when I'm giving my presentation I'll know what slide I'm on and I can talk about it because when you give a PowerPoint presentation you don't want to put all your text on the slide you want to put your bullet points and then talk about it so that is the master, slide master, handout master, notes master. Now, I'm going to go to slide, I'm on slide four. I'm going to save my presentation. I'm going to go ahead and save it um, on the desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and call it um, presentation live. And I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up. One of the things you're going to notice is this little tag on the right. It says, welcome back. Pick up where you left off. I was on slide four. So if I click on that, it'll actually take me to slide four. So well, this is very, very helpful when you're working with lots of slides. If you were on slide 40, you clicked on it, you'd go back to where you left off. 
So when you close your presentation in 2013, that little tag will let you know where you left off. It does that in Word and um, so it's a nice feature. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to bring in another uh, slide from another presentation. So on the home ribbon, I'm going to go to new slide and I'm going to go to reuse slides. When I go to reuse slides, I'm going to hit browse, file, and I'm going to go and locate my presentation called Medical Montage and I'm going to hit open. Now it's going to bring those slides in over here on the right. When I want one of the slides from this presentation, if I clicked on it, it would actually insert that slide into this presentation and it would match the template that I'm pasting it into. So you can see that it completely blends in with my presentation here. But if I want to, and if I want to insert them all, I can right click and hit insert all slides. But if I want to keep the design, then I'm going to go ahead and say keep source formatting down below. I'm going to click on the slide and then it's going to bring in that design template with this design template. So now I have two design templates in one presentation. But when you do that, you also end up with two slide masters. So if I go to view and I go to slide master, I now have a slide master for this style and my slide master for my other style is up here at the top. So if I click here and I wanted to make this text say I want to change it to red and maybe make it bold, maybe center it, maybe I want to change the text color down here. So I want to, you know, go here and change it to something different. I can. And then when I close out of that slide master, I've just updated this one and made that different. So you now I have two different slide templates, slide masters in my presentation now because I have two different design templates. I am going to uh, insert a chart. Now I'm going to get into the graphics. So I'm going to I'm going to go in here since this is a heart one um, medical one. I'm just going to say heart decreases, and then I'm going to make sure that my layout is a title and content one. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay, never mind. So now I want to insert a chart. So I'm going to take away my bullets. I don't want a bullet in here. I don't want text in here. And when I do that, you'll notice these little images that appear here. One says I can insert a table. I can insert a chart, smart art, video, pictures. So I get these little graphics. When you choose the title and content, before you start typing your bullets, you get these little icons. You can also go to the insert ribbon and do it, but I'm gonna click on the little chart button. I'm gonna insert a basic column chart. And it gives you fake data. It brings up a little Excel sheet with fake data and then my chart. But you know what? I already have my data in an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna to go to the Excel spreadsheet I'm going to select that data that I already have. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go back to PowerPoint and I'm going to paste it. Now, I don't need this line here, number four, so I'm going to delete that data that's in there and I'm going to close my little chart window. And then I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint slide and you can see that I have a chart. Now I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with charting because basically this is the next webinar. So if you want to learn about charts and creating chart templates uh, in the next, in this, you want to learn more about this, then the next webinar will cover this. But a few things about it, you'll notice I'm on the design ribbon. I can do things under here to take out like the chart title if I don't want it. If I want to add labels, I can choose the labels in the center. But I have this extra data here. Even though I deleted the data, it's still looking at this area. So I have this blank area here. So if I go to the Select Data button up here and I re-highlight the, the data again and say, no, I want this data and hit OK. Now I just have my chart. It keeps going back to Excel. Let me close this Excel. 
So now I have my chart here. I can change my chart type. I can go in here and later um, in the next session, I'll show you how to create your chart templates with your own color schemes. But if you wanted to do a bar chart, you could change it to a bar chart. I could go to the home ribbon and I could make the text bold, make it bigger, maybe make it red to stand out. And I have a chart. And then later we can animate this. So you can work with a chart when you learn how to use charts. You can do the same thing in, a, in PowerPoint when you're working with, char with charts, the same thing that you do in Excel. It's a little different in 13 than it was in 10. So if you're using 10, you might have a third tab up here. Um, if you're using 13, they have some changes to this uh, chart feature. All right, so now I'm gonna do another slide. I'm gonna do Control M. But I wanna go back to the uh, money layout. So if I go to layout and I choose the Let's do the blank layout. It'll go back to that particular template design. So I'm going to use that one for this next. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to word art. I'm going to insert word art, the styles of word art that you get based off the template that you choose. So if I choose this particular one, I'm going to do a capital P space P space T. Now, this word art, there's a rotate button here. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to go to more rotation options to bring up the, the format window on the right. There's a text box. You got position, you have text box. So that's for this, this text box here. So I'm going to click on it. And for the vertical alignment, I'm going to choose middle. And for the text direction, I'm going to choose stacked. Now what that does is it stacks the text so it's on top of each other. I'm gonna move it over to the right and then I'm gonna type text to go across here. So now I'm gonna insert, you could do a text box or I'm gonna do another word art, pick something different. And then I'm gonna type powerful and I'm gonna move it over here. Now when I move it, you're gonna notice in 2013, you'll see the line up here if not, if you want to add a grid line so that you can line things up, if you go to view and check the guide box, it's actually a guide, you'll see you have a guide going up and down and across. But I could take that guide, drag it over, and then I can take my box and line it up to that guide. You can also use your arrow keys if for some reason you don't feel that it's lining up right. Or sometimes when you're dragging, because when you click here where it says show and you click on this little button here, the snap objects to grid is on. So if you're having trouble, you know, you want it to snap to that grid or guide because that's why it's there. But if not, if sometimes it's a little difficult to move, use the arrow keys. Now I'm going to do control C and I'm going to do control V to paste this. So I'm going to paste a second one and then this one is going to say present and I'll just drag that over, line it up, and then maybe arrow down. And another one for the last one. And I can line that up. I can also select all three of them, but when you select all three of them at the same time, hold your shift key now, not your control key. And normally it would be control, but in this case it's shift. Now I can go over here to the format ribbon and I can do the alignment and I can say distribute vertically in case I feel like they're not even. Now I know they're spaced out just right. And so now I have my little slide here. So later when I animate this, I can have this text move or this text move, whatever I want to do, but I've actually laid this out a little bit differently. Just something to show you a different type of slide. I'm going to
going to go back to our second slide. And I'm going to go ahead and change this, turn this into a smart art diagram. So I'm going to click on this placeholder. On the home ribbon, I can convert to smart art. So I can choose any of these styles here, or I could go to more smart art graphics and get any of the smart art styles that you see listed here. But when I go here, I'm going to choose this one. I can click on the little box here, the double arrow, to stretch that out. I can change the design of it. If I wanted to change the color, I could. I can also do the same with the bullets. Click on the placeholder, go to convert to smart art, pick my style, and turn the bullets into a smart art diagram. Again, enhance it with the different styles that you see here. So now I have a smart art diagram. I'm going to add a new slide, control M. This one's going to be an organizational chart. And I'm going to click on the smart art diagram graphic button here. And I'm going to use the hierarchy diagram. I'll use this one here to create a organizational chart. Now, this is good for basic organizational chart design. But if you have Microsoft Visio, it's a very powerful tool. We have a webinar coming up um, on Visio to do flow and org charts, so it might be helpful. It's a very powerful diagram program. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go ahead and Joe, he's president. Notice that I adjust the text as I type. We've got Mary. She's the vice president. I am going to take that one out so I can delete this one. I'm going to, well, maybe not. Move the shape. Why isn't it taking it out? All right, there we go. So now if I want to demote that back down, sometimes when you do things, it moves them up, but you could demote and promote them up. So I'm going to have Susan, who's a, um, she's the manager, and Dan's the manager. Take that out. Then I can add a shape below. So I can have Tim and add another shape below. I have George. So just to kind of get started. And so you can add shapes to the right before or after the level that you're on. You can promote a shape up or down or, or demote a shape. Well, this is a low, but I could, you know, promote them up to make them even like this or keep pr promoting them up. I can change the color of the diagram if I want, depending on the choices that you want to make. So if I decide that I want to pick something like that, I can. I can change the style of it. Maybe I want it to go across. So I can change the colors. I can change the design. And now I have a quick org chart. And later I can I can animate that and show you how to we can animate it. So now I am going to go to my number two slide. And I'm going to go to the slide master again and on the slide master you can't see it very well but you do get a date I'm going to change the color on that and I can make it bigger and so it has the date here the date field so I'm going to move that down here there is a footer box here if I want, if I want to move that. This one comes with it. Otherwise, you could have gone to insert header and footer. You could have said update, I want the current date, and then I want to add a footer here if you didn't see the footer box. And then you could type your text in here and hit apply. 
But I'm going to go ahead and type enhancing PPT, enhancing presentations. I'm going to change the color so I can read it. I'll make it red. And of course. Okay. Then I'm going to size this down and make it bold. Maybe make it a little bigger. And then I'll move it over here. Anything you do in the Slide Master is going to be on every slide except the title slide. And then finally, I'm going to insert a online picture. Just type logo. Pick these. I'm going to size it. Now this logo will appear on every slide. And I'll move it down here. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller. Put it in the center. So now when I close out of my slide master view, you're going to see Uh huh. Okay. So what happened? So what happened was I wasn't in the top one. So I'll go back to the top one and I'll see there's that slide there. So I will cut this and then go back here and paste it. So you can see what happens if you don't end up on the top slide. So I purposely did that so that you can see that if you're not in the top one, you can, it, it's very easy to get confused and make sure that you're in the very top, top, top slide there. So again, it's, I got to get this out of here. Cut, get to the top one, now do it. Paste it, there it is. Go to the other one, the footer. I have to recreate it. Enhancing, I'm just going to put PowerPoint presentations. I'm going to change the color on this one real quick. There we go. Size it. Move it. Get the logo. Cut it. Go to the top. Paste it. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to close out. Now you should see it. Not on the title, but when I go to the other slides, you should see that. And I don't know what happened to the PowerPoint one, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because I need to. I'm, I think I'm a little bit worried about just getting done on time. So you can see the date in the corner. You can see the logo at the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a slide sorter view. So if I go to view and go to slide sorter view, I can click on the minus and the plus to rearrange my slides. I can, um, to see more of my slides, I can rearrange them so when I do my presentation, you'll be able to see the ones that I want. And then the ones that I don't want, all these extra slides that I see here, I can just hold my shift key down and or my control key down and just delete the ones that I don't want. So I don't want this, 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 and this. I just want the ones that I'm doing right now for the presentation. Okay, good. I can reorder them. I can do whatever I want. I can move this over if I need to. I can take this over. I can take this over. And now, if I want, double click on a slide and it would take me to that slide in normal view. I'm going to add another slide. So I'm going to do the Control M. Gives me a title and content slide. This is going to be my video now. So I'm going to insert video. So right here, I could do it or I could change the layout to title only and go to the insert ribbon and go over here to video. There's two types of videos you can do and I'm going to do both. Online video, so I could go to YouTube. I'm going to type webinar number four, Simplex IT. And these are some of the uh, Simplex IT videos. And I'm going to insert Bob. There's Bob. Hello. So I have Bob. Now I can go to the playback tab and I can have that start on click, meaning I have to click on it. 
or start automatically. Sometimes with the YouTube videos it's a little tricky, but when I want to play that video, now I'm going to do Shift F5. That's going to run the slide from the current slide, which is going to bring up the slide with the video. And then the little button's going to appear, and I can click on it, and we can watch the video real quick. All right, so I'm going to pause it, hit escape to go back to my slide. There we go. So that's one video. Those are YouTube videos. Um, now I'm going to go and create another slide. This one is going to be the wildlife video. So I'm going to go to insert video, videos on my PC. So I have a wildlife video that I'm going to insert. Now there's a couple of things that I want to do with this video. One of them is I can change the shape of the video so I can make it more rounded, shaded. I can change the shape of it so I wanted to do something more like that. And if I wanted to change the effects to make it a little bit softer, I can. I can size it if I wanted to. If I want to size it, I can actually make it a little bit smaller if I need to. I can go to the playback tab. Now with this particular video, I can have it um, rewind after playing and I can have it start automatically. So I'm going to do this one to start automatically and rewind when it's done. I'm also going to trim the video. So I'm going to hit the trim video button here and I may want to only see the horses. So as I play it, Now that might be a little bit too much. So I can take this back a little bit and say, okay, now try it. Maybe a little more. All right. So if I do Shift F5, it plays that part of the video that I want. So I trimmed it. I have it set to play automatically when it gets to that slide. And so that's my video. Now I'm going to go over here to the organizational chart and I'm going to insert audio. Online audio, audio on your PC. Um, if you have audio, you can record audio. So I'm going to go to online audio. And I'm just going to type audio in the clip art area. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the looking for my sad church organ. So I'm going to insert that. Now, again, with the audio, you can have it set to rewind. You can have it set to play automatically. You can even have it play across multiple slides and keep playing loop until stopped. I'm going to hide it because I don't want it to show. So when I do Shift F5, I can also, if I want to, trim audio. So if I don't want to listen to the whole thing, which is 16 minutes, I can take it and just scroll it down and say, okay, I just want to hear, you know, I just want to hear four seconds of it. And then maybe I want to hear a little more than that. So I could take that up. Maybe I'll take that up to six. Or, yeah. Okay, so now I have my audio. All right. 
Now I'm going to go back to my title slide and I'm going to insert an online picture. So I'm going to do a dollar bill. And I'm going to take that dollar bill and I'm going to enhance it. I can enhance the graphics of it to make it darker or lighter, depending on what you want to do. So you, you can adjust the contrast of the object that you paste in. I'm on the format ribbon of the picture toolbar. I can change the color. Sometimes what I found and it's a little different than I found in 10 is that when you're when you're working with graphics or whatever sometimes um, in 2013 you may have to click off of it back on it and then go back to the the artistic effects or whatever you know effect that you're trying to to put on there for some reason when you go back to color you can see that it doesn't have the same options I had before so if I click away and go back and then hit it it comes back I, I have no idea why it does that but anyways so and then I can take to send this behind I can say send it back and I can put if I want to I can put this in behind and I can put it behind the text that I have and if I want to change that color again Maybe make it a little bit lighter. Maybe more of a washout. Just depends on what you want to do. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, so there you go. So now I have my my graphic behind my placeholder. All right. So now. I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about inserting comments, hyperlinks, and action buttons. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website here. When you, well, first of all, I'm going to go to the bullet. Let me go to this bullet here. No, where's that other one? I had a slide with bullets. All right. So let's say I have this one and I want to insert a comment. So I go to insert comment, I get a little comment box, and I'll say check figures, just to keep it simple. And I'll close it. You'll see the little uh, comment icon in the corner, but I can drag it anywhere I want on the slide. And when you click on that little comment button, it brings up the comment box over here on the right. What's nice about this is if you send this to someone, they could reply back, and when they send it to you, you see the little, now you have two little boxes here. So you have two little comments. So when you click on it, you can keep replying. So if you send it to someone and they type a comment, it would have their name, their comment, and then you would keep, you could keep responding. But you could put comments in the presentation for you, or you could put comments in the presentation for others to respond to. To remove the comment, there's a little X in the corner that you can click on, and that will take the comment off. When you want to insert hyperlinks, if I click on the text, you have to insert a hyperlink to a text, either a text box, a placeholder, a graphic, something. And so I'm going to select this placeholder here, and I'm going to go to the hyperlink button on the insert ribbon, and I'm going to insert this to hyperlink to the simplexit.com website. I'm going to hit OK, and then when I do Shift F5, and I want to go to that site, I could click on that link and it would act automatically open up the website and there it is. Hyperlinks can also hyperlink to files can hyperlink to email addresses. So like in here, if you wanted to hyperlink to his email, you could select his box only, 
or his name and then do hyperlink and then put his email which is usually mail to colon joe smith at aol.com and then there would be a link to his email address to remove the hyperlink you can right click and then do remove hyperlink to take it off action buttons now i'm going to go to this slide here and I'm going to say insert a text box that says go to chart go to chart and when I do that I'm going to go to insert action button and you can an action button is a hyperlink can be a hyperlink but also it hyperlinks to not only websites it can hyperlink to other presentations it can hyperlink to custom shows it can which we're going to do in a minute um, you can actually go to a spe specific slide so I can say go to um, my um, organizational I want to go to slide three the one that has the powerful presentation topics so I can hit that hit that actually go to PPT is what I wanted to say so now when I do the shift F5 and I put the music it jumps back to that slide so you can put hyper you can put action buttons in here to do things you can do hyperlinks if you go to view you can also view this in grayscale so that if you want the black with grayscale fill you could still have the background depending on remember this is a different layout over here where the chart is on but you can see it in black and white you can print it in black and white to save on color if you need to i'm going to go back to color view now the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add quick transition so i'm going to go to transition I'm going to, we talked about transitions and animations in the last class, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm going to go to the transition. I'm going to go to the dynamic content and click the conveyor. That one brings in everything at this, and I'm going to hit apply to all. Now, if I want my presentation to run on timings, I have to uncheck mouse click after and then set my timings, apply to all. Now when I hit F5 to start it from the beginning, it'll run my presentation, and then we're gonna animate a few objects in here. We've got the charts. We've got the work with the music. And I can put point slide. We've got Bob that I could click on to run him if I wanted to. We've got the video. And we've got the end. All right, so now let's do a quick animation on the Smart Art diagram. So we'll do the animation tab. I'll pick the shape one. You can always pick the shape here. For this one, I'll do the shape again, but I want it to come in one by one. So the pyramid, the first bullet, the second group. Now, with the text that I put vertically, if I select all three, holding my shift key down, and I choose the wave, it'll do all three at the same time. So as opposed to do, selecting each one separately and then animating, it'll do the wave. Now, if I like that wave animation, I can select that placeholder that I applied it to, double click on the animation painter, and then anywhere that I go, I can apply that animation to that text. So I can go to my title and apply it if I want, and then just click on the animation painter to turn it off.
when you're running your presentation and you want to stop it because you are using timings, the S key will stop it and the S key will resume it. Also, when you right click and you go to pen color, pointer options, and you go to pen, you can draw on the slide while you're giving the presentation. And you can also right click and go to laser pointer and you can use this as a pointer. Now if I hit S again, it will resume. If I click B, it blacks out the screen and B resumes. White, white out the screen and then resumes. If you hold down the number, if you type like three and then enter, it will go back to slide three or whatever slide you're on. Now, when I end this, it says want to keep your ink annotations. So if I say keep and go back to the slide that I had the ink annotations on, it'll keep them and they'll print. If I don't want them, click on it because they're a graphic and hit your delete key and it'll take it off. Now, I'm going to go to the slideshow ribbon, set up show, just to say that if you are using timings and you want it to keep running, you can check loop and it'll just keep running over and over again. You can change your pen color and you can change your laser pointer color too. So when you run your presentation, it, you, can, you can do that. Now, the other thing on the slideshow ribbon is custom shows. So what's nice about this is I have these slides, but I might want to, let's say you have 50 to 100 slides, and now you want to do a group of slides for one group, and then you want to do another set for another group or in clients. So you go to Custom Show, you hit New, you go ahead and you say, okay, I want this slide, this slide, this slide, and this slide, and you add them to the right. And this is going to be for the HR group. Then I want to do another one for the accounting group. Or maybe this is, you know, you have different slides for different clients. So then I can say I want this one, this one, this one, this one, and add it and hit OK. So now if I want to run the presentation for the HR group, I hit HR and it's only going to run the slides for that particular group. Oh, yeah, you love my music voice here. So then the next time you want to run it, you run it for the accounting group. Now the nice thing, and if you want to edit, go to custom shows and then you can select the show and edit if you want to remove slides. But the nice thing about this is if you update a slide in this presentation, then it updates in the custom shows because it's the same slide. So you don't have to have a different presentation for the HR group and then another one for the accounting group and having to worry about updating slides in all those different presentations. You can have one large presentation and smaller presentations inside. Also a couple things when you go to file, if you are optimizing media, you can compress your media. I'm not gonna do it because um, I don't want it. It's going to take too long, but you can compress your media. It'll it'll go ahead and clean it up to make it more efficient when you run your presentation. And when you go to file print and you are using custom shows, when you say down here, you can say just print the slides for the HR group so you can print the handouts for that particular presentation. So for the HR group, you can just print the the slides in this view. So it's a nice, the custom shows are really nice way of creating smaller presentations in a larger one. So now that we've, we have this, this presentation that we created, and one final thing that I wanted to cover was the photo album. So I just wanted to, you know, use PowerPoint. I know there's always more that you can do with it, 
but I just wanted to show you some things enhancing it with the graphics and, and just showing you some ways of using it more effectively with the videos and, and the audio and all of the different diagrams that you can insert. But the one thing that they created in the insert ribbon was the photo album. And this is actually going to create a new presentation. So I'm going to click on it and hit new photo album. And then it says, what, where are your pictures? So I have pictures in a file here. So I'm going to click on file and there's the photos. So I'm going to select them all. I'm actually going to do control A, which is going to select them all. And I'm going to hit insert. Now it's inserted those pictures in here and it has them set to fit to slide, but I can change it to do like two pictures per slide and I can change it to, um, you know, if I want to put a border around them, if I want a caption below the pictures. I'll do two pictures with title. I don't know why it's not showing it up here. I'm going to check them all. I don't know why they're not checked. It's a little different in 2013. In 10, you don't have the check boxes. So, I'll just hit create and see what happens. Hopefully, yeah, here we go. So now I have my photo album. I have my pictures. I can change the captions underneath if I want. And as I click on them, you can see the different graphics. Hello, everybody. Hello, the groundhog. And you can see the photos. So it took all the photos, put them in here. I can put my titles at the top. And then you could run this. This is great for graduations, which are still going on maybe and just ended or whatever it is, family reunions, great time for summertime. So you just imported all of your pictures into a photo album. It's a brand new presentation. You can save it and then you can do some of the things that I showed you today to enhance with music and videos and hopefully have some great presentations for the future. So I hope you enjoyed today, today's presentation um, of you know PowerPoint. The next presentation is going to be the Excel charts, how to create charts in Excel, work with them. And because charts in Excel and PowerPoint kind of work together, it would be great to know how to work with charts, how to create chart templates, and then you can use those templates in your PowerPoint presentations. So hopefully we'll see you back again next month. Um, thank you again for participating, and I look forward to seeing, um, seeing you again or hearing from me again. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.